Because we are treating the cause. Because with all due respect, uh, ever since the days of Hippocrates, there's been a covenant of trust that whenever the caregiver can, they will share with the patient what is the causation of the illness. And sadly today, in cardiovascular medicine, that's being done. What is offered to the patients are drugs, stents, and bypass surgery, not one of which has a single thing, single solitary thing whatsoever to do with the causation of the illness. All right. So, summarizing, there is no mortality from the diet. There is no morbidity from the diet. There is no extra expense you got to eat. And the benefits do nothing except improve with the passage of time. And today, most patients who have had a heart attack are really sort of walking around with a sword of Damocles hanging over their head. They're wondering when they're going to get their next heart attack. Nonsense! When they're totally committed to whole food, plant-based nutrition, they're not going to have any further events. Now, let's switch a minute to the leg. Here, what you see on the left. This is a pulse biome on a 54-year-old gentleman who was, uh, had coronary artery heart disease and in addition had a partially blocked artery in his thigh, which gave this pulse volume you see on the left. And it was interesting that I was so focused on his heart, uh, I, I totally forgot about his leg because he, when he first started seeing me, had to stop five times while crossing the skyway to my office because of pain in his calf from the partially blocked artery in his thigh. But 10 months into the study, one day when visiting, he said, Dr. Esselstyn, do you recall when I first started seeing you, I had to stop five times crossing the skyway to your office? Yeah. He said, you know, doc, the last uh, month, the pain went away. I said, well, Don, let's go back to the vascular lab and get another pulse volume. And now you can see the pulse volume on the right was double what it was on the left. We suddenly now had, early in our study, absolutely irrefutable, rock-solid data that food and food alone could actually reverse cardiovascular disease. And somebody's going to say, hey, wait a minute. What about the statin? Well, look at, again, the dates. This was 1986. We did not have any statins. And one thing we found in our program, many patients long before they've heard of me have learned that they simply couldn't take a statin because of the side effects of either severe muscle cramps, injury to the liver, it was causing them diabetes or brain fog. And yet <clears throat> really quite interesting is when they follow the program exactly as we outlined it, they do just as well as the patients who are taking statin. Here's another. Uh, this happens to be a retired high school chemistry teacher, age 78. And in his retirement, he and his wife enjoyed entering square dance contests. However, they found that he found that during the fast square dance, he was getting bilateral calf pain. So he saw these vascular surgeons who got the image that you see here. And he was not very excited about the magnitude of the operation they were proposing for him. So he came to see us and said, Dr. Esselstyn, if I choose your method, how long will it take me to get rid of the calf pain? So I looked at him with great wisdom in my face and said, probably about nine or 10 months. Three months later, I got a phone call. Dr. Esselstyn, you do not speak the truth. The pain is gone. Now, for those of you in the audience today, I have no idea what it's like in your hometowns, but in Cleveland, when you're watching a sporting event or a mystery, just before the uh, advertisement comes on, you will hear the mellifluous tones of the announcer say something about, when the moment is right, will you be ready? Now, we all know that the penile artery is really quite small compared to the coronary artery and not infrequently before somebody comes down with coronary disease they may find that they're no longer able to phrase raise the flag however all is not lost because not infrequently i'll get a, 
phone call from somebody nine or 10 months after I've counseled them that goes a little bit like this. Hi, Doc. Uh, this is Joe. I just wanted to say hello because I wanted you to know that recently something has come up and I'm wondering if I don't owe you another check. All right. Now, <clears throat> I want to spend a moment uh, on this one because this is quite, quite important to understand. What you are looking at on the left here is a PET scan. And when the PET scan is working properly, if the muscle of the heart is being perfused with blood, it'll be re uh, red or orange or yellow. But you can see on the left, there's a patch on the right that is all green. And the green indicates ischemia, poor blood supply. So I counseled that gentleman. He was a 58-year-old school bus driver from Youngstown, Ohio. And it was actually uh, about 10 days later, his cholesterol had dropped to 137. And then three weeks after his first PET scan, we repeated it. We got another PET scan. And now you can see within three weeks, the area that previously was ischemic and poorly perfused is now reperfused just in three weeks. Well, now, and that really set me to thinking what was going on. I just didn't see how any plaque, how it could go away in, in, uh, in three weeks. And I wondered how this was getting reperfused. So I spoke with, uh, with Eduardo Rodriguez who was the chairman of Cleveland Clinic Pathology, Cardiology, cardiology in the, uh, the pathology division. And he dissects uh, 200 hearts a year from the deceased. And I asked Rod, I said, how often do you ever see on uh, this uh, autopsy dissection, do you ever see any blockage or plaque? in the heart vessels once they have dived into the muscle. Because what you've got in front of you is one of my wonderful slides that shows the vascular supply of the heart. You can see the three main vessels, the right coronary artery, the left anterior descending, and the, and the uh, circumflex. Where do they all go? They all eventually dive into the heart muscle. And you can see all those marvelous connections on thousands of thousands of intramuscular vessels. And, I, and I'd asked Rodriguez, did he ever see any plaque in those small intramuscular vessels? And his answer was never. So really now, now I had the answer to why they were being reperfused. When you think about it, when we first see these patients, they are so sick. Their endothelial system is hardly making any nitric oxide, the great dilator, and your endothelial cells have actually now become your enemy. They are making two molecules, endothelin and thromboxane, which are vasoconstrictive. In other words, well, think about it. All those intramuscular vessels that you see on this heart uh, slide all those intramuscular vessels are narrowed and pinched by, so we say something like spasm from these vasoconstrictors of endothelin and thromboxane. So what seems to be happening as soon as these patients stop eating the Western diet, we really fill them with whole food plant-based nutrition. They decrease suddenly making the vasoconstrictors of endothelin and thromboxane and once again, they start making the great dilator nitric oxide. So that accounts for the fact, I'm sure, that within three weeks, you can often see these patients. Uh, it's really quite remarkable when you think about uh, actually talking to the patients, especially those who have uh, stable angina. They suddenly realize sometimes within as early as two, four, six, or eight minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, not two, or two, four, six, eight, or 10 days, their angina, angina is markedly uh, disappearing. Sorry for the background phone in a minute. 
Uh, now, if we summarize the capacity of disease reversal, it can be seen in several ways. You can see reversal of disease on an angiogram, which we showed you. We've seen it reverse on the stress test. I showed you the reversal on the PET scan. Uh, ultrasound, I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute in a patient. Uh, it's profoundly exciting when they, you can see it reverse on the pulse volume. And of course, you can reverse the symptoms of angina, claudication, and erectile uh, dysfunction. Now, I don't know if we've lost, how much time we've lost from the, uh, from before, but I think I've got a little more, uh, a little more time here, and I want to. You've got you've got forty five minutes, doctor. So you're you're fine. We'll we'll just reduce the, the Q and A. I'll, uh, some of I know uh, patients have asked how it is that a general surgeon like Doctor Esselstyn ever gets interested in nutrition, and I think it's only fair to share that background with you. Uh, it was in 1979 when I was chairman of the Breast Cancer Task Force at the Cleveland Clinic that I became increasingly disillusioned with the fact that for no matter how many women I was doing breast surgery, I was doing absolutely nothing for the next unsuspecting victim. And that led me to do a bit of uh, global research. And it was quite striking to find other uh, cultures where breast cancer rates were 30 and 40 times less frequent than in the United States. For example, even in rural, uh, no, in, like in Kenya, or in rural China in, 19, in the 1950s, breast cancer was very infrequently identified. However, as soon as the Japanese women would migrate to the United States by the second <clears throat> and third generation, they now began to have the same rate of breast cancer as their Caucasian counterpart, 